CEO of uh, Interscan. So uh, to, together with my colleague, uh, Richard, uh, the topic of our presentation today will be the state of the premium machine. So we last presented at uh, Death Country, Cancun, 2017. So fast forward to 2019, today we look at how the uh, network has evolved and grown since then by first looking at the overall MJ blockchain statistics. And what it goes without saying, right, uh, the building technical infrastructure is challenging. There are also unique uh, non-technical issues and challenges to make some kind of services. So uh, through user feedback, we compiled a list of uh, common end user pain points which we will share with you. Yeah, so as builders, right, so to build uh, better dApps or apps, it's also important to understand the user base that you're uh, So using uh, analytics data, we look at the uh, changing use, user demographics of the Ethereum ecosystem, and we learn and discover what the Ethereum user persona looks like today, versus that of the user. All right, so to kick things off, I'll pass the speaker to me. Thanks, Matthew. Hi, I'm Vee, and I'm a product manager in this In this section, I'm going to go through some of the on chain statistics of the Ethereum network. Before we dive into the statistics, Ethereum has definitely come far in, in its vision and getting closer each year to bring blockchain to mainstream. We have witnessed a number of network and then we upgrades from Frontier, Homestead, Byzantium, and the recent constant inoperable activation. Every activation is important at this, as it includes the IP that will help Ethereum the long term. This is a marathon and the one that's free. Moving on to the total transactions chart, we can observe a total number of 552 million transactions that has been processed so far on the network. The dramatic increase that uh, from year 2016 to 2018 can be concluded from projects raising ICOs or otherwise uh, known as token sales. With the popularity of NFT and decentralized exchanges in 2017, in addition to the all-time high price of one meter, the volume of transactions has more than doubled up, pushing more transactions than ever. Fast forward to 2018, uh, a number of stable coins and node platforms have been launched and this marked the beginning of DeFi. However, however, in 2019, uh, the total number of transactions has slightly dropped compared to the uh, same time of previous year. Partially, we think the reasons are due to price correction and own, uh, launches of own mainnet for those projects that completed the ICOs. Next, we'll look at the address ether balance distribution. There are over 76 million unique addresses, and after excluding uh, the zero balance ether addresses, uh, the summaries are over 96% of addresses. Uh, hold less than one meter. 3.5% of addresses hold between 1 to 1,000 meter. And what is interesting is that less than 0.03% of addresses with ether balance of more than 1,000 meter holds, uh, holds almost 81% of total ether supply. Ethereum is known for the smart contract development and it allows developers to write their own contracts and deploy them onto the blockchain so they can run on its own without any central server. In total, there are over 18 million contracts created uh, and deployed in the mainnet. Most of these are written in Solidity, a JavaScript like language, and only a near 0.004% contract sources are available. We do expect this number to increase uh, with better tools and integration in the future. In addition, the two most popular contract types, which are ERC20 and ERC71, make up around 1.2% of the total contracts created so far. Miners play an essential role to secure the Ethereum network and in the process we receive mining rewards. Uh, the top 5 miners are shown on the pie chart and the quality uh, of the Ethereum is 99% of the mining blocks. Ideally, every block should contain transactions, but sometimes there are still empty blocks, which means there are no transactions on the block. For the current year, this number is around 2.26% to the total mining blocks. Uh, looking at the gas utilization, Utilization chart here, uh, which is Ethereum has uh, adjusted its gas limit for around two times. Uh, the few notable increase points are when uh, the launch of ICO in 2017 and later the launch of uh, the very popular Q Crypto in late December. Just recently, at the end of last month, uh, we see another increase uh, uh, 
uh, due to the partially attributed to the ERC timing for the transactions. By comparing the average gas use in each block, the network utilization is uh, reaching the all-time high of 96.5% of its network capacity. Anyone can just download an Ethereum node today, uh, an Ethereum client might an Ethereum node on their computer. But how big the storage is quite so today. By comparing the blockchain size growth in 2019 for both GAT and IP nodes, uh, we can see that GAT is going at high, uh, higher rate and is estimated to be a wider margin by that year. <coughs> Having said that, in the release of uh, version 1.9 uh, this July, uh, the improvements have drastically reduced the blockchain data size for GAT. Uh, this can be measured from the uh, spike and drop in the channel. Uh, now we need notes. Notes play as important uh, role as the data giveaway points for applications to retrieve information from the blockchain. Uh, looking at the total notes that online as the focus in the US this year, US has a far commanding of 32.5%, China 12.3%, followed by Germany, Singapore, and France. These five countries accounts for over 60% of the most distribution and it's reflective of the developed user community that we that they are working on running or running as you know. It's important to track the average nodes count as more nodes with more data because to serve all the applications and keep the connectivity high at all times. On average the nodes count is just under 7,000, and it looks like get and parity are still the most popular client types out there. To sum up how has the internet network evolved so far, transactions has been growing monumentally since 2016 and it has continued to improve uh, with each up network update. The network utilization is at all time high in which each box almost failed. With the ability for the miners to increase or decrease uh, gas need to uh, this facility has allowed the network developing with sudden spike of planning transactions and also with standing and spending. Able to run an Ethereum node with less storage requirements is better for anyone that wish to run one. And we are seeing improvements to the client that uh, has created this for every users. And lastly, the importance of nodes as data data entry points are not simply, uh, not simply low. <coughs> we hope to see the increase of the number of clients that comes online in the next 12 months. And these are the brief overview of the on-chain statistics. And I will now pass the mic back to Matthew Tan. No mic. <laughs> All right. Uh, thanks, V. Okay, so like uh, figuring out a product to market this strategy is always difficult. Uh, it, it requires uh, multiple re iterations, retries, attempts, and sometimes just a little bit of luck. So. Uh, one way to approach this, of course, is to look at what are the existing end user pain points and to figure out if we can uh, build solutions around the area. So at Etherscan, we receive uh, thousands of ticket issues on a monthly basis and we serve a diverse range of users. So what we've done here right now is we've gone back and looked through this uh, user feedback uh, and issues and compiled a list of uh, common end user pain points which we have observed over time. Alright, uh, as a builder, do keep in mind, right, so some of these issues might really appear trivial, easy, simplistic, uh, but these are actual real-world issues that the uh, common end-user faces when interacting with Ethereum. So in no order of importance, the first issue is the uh, request for refunds and to cancel transactions. So I know there is this perception like with, uh, as we like traditional transactions, uh, the uh, users just want to have the ability to cancel their transactions or have their transactions uh, refunded when an error is made. And a lot of times, uh, the, the reason this happens are like uh, when users have problems uh, identifying the uh, correct address to send to. And of course, it doesn't really help right, that the uh, token naming schemes can be pretty confusing at times. You know, we have like TUSD versus USDT. Uh, hot uh, holo, holo. Hot, uh, holo token versus hot hydro protocol, so very similar naming schemes. And the, the other issue that we always get has to do with the uh, transaction info or the address balance not immediately uh, updated and reflected. So 
often there is a, a, a lag time. Uh, perhaps between the UI after confirmation time in this computer, and this dummy occurs and changes and error. Uh, so the user just gets answers, uh, expects the uh, the uh, balance to be updated immediately, and when it's not, they tend to get panicky. Uh, the next question that we get is like, what do you do when a transaction fails? So. For instance, the uh, out-guess, uh, reverter, or some other error codes. So it's basically just users uh, asking about why the uh, transaction has failed and what are the next steps they need to take to fix this. Yeah, and lastly, how do you convert tokens to cash and deposit them to bank accounts? So uh, essentially, users just want to cash out and not knowing how to do so safely. All right, so. As a builder, what can we do? Uh, so we have a uh, couple of thoughts here. So I think it would definitely help uh, to provide uh, additional information on what to do next when an error occurs within your app or app. Uh, or better still, like why did the error occur in the first place and what are the steps they, that they can take in order to prevent this from happening. And a lot of confusion uh, with sending to the wrong addresses could be avoided by using uh, human readable addressing schemes like ENS, Internet Name Service. And when it comes to uh, security, always assume that uh, everything can be hacked or exploited. It's not a matter of well, if, but when. <laughs> and when that happens, uh, what are the next steps to take to mitigate the situation? And as simple as it sounds like the cash off, cash on ramp, the cash off ramp to huge markets. Uh, users just want to be able to cash in, cash out, quickly and safely. And here's an idea for a DAP on app, refundable transactions. Can this be done? Uh, so I know this kind of definitely goes against the immutable nature of the blockchain, but it's definitely ongoing and you don't need one. So all right, for the final section of this presentation, I would like to talk about the Ethereum user persona. So one of the things that we found extremely useful as builders uh, when building an application is to first understand who your target audience is. So what I would like to do uh, is uh, using share with your analytics data uh, derived over the last few years and kind of work towards building a model of what the typical user user will try to do. Okay, so by looking at our site statistics, one of the, uh, the first few interesting things that we found over the last two years was actually a shift in user geolocations. So um, it was back in 2016, uh, the US made up 45% of the user demographics. In 2017, we noted the increase of users coming from China, and uh, this trend continued into 2018, when the number of users in China was in parity with that of the US. So fast forward to 2019, this is what the top five user geolocation impacts. With China forming the largest majority of users, followed by the US, Germany, Ukraine, and South Korea. So the takeaway here is that understanding where your users are located can be extremely helpful like uh, when optimizing the location of your servers, uh, figuring out like which languages to support, or uh, or deciding where to allocate resources for user growth and adoption. So this is on a uh, slightly related topic, right? So from what we understand, right? So one of the uh, criteria for deciding a depth <laughs> location uh, was to encourage adoption in specific regions of everything. So what we did here is uh, that we, we actually mapped out the uh, previous depth locations and compare them with the following year user location demographics. Right? So from our casual observation, not really scientific, <laughs> we found that in the past four years that there was indeed an increase in the percentage of users from locations where the death point event was held previously. Yeah, so I think it's definitely gonna be super interesting, right, to see if this casual observation slash theory uh, holds through uh, the next year after death point five. And whether or not we actually see an increase of adoption of users in Japan.
All right, so moving on. As for the uh, language, the languages used, we look at the user browser and language settings. And uh, from this, we actually find that uh, most of the users have their settings in English, followed by Chinese and Russian. So, I mean, if you're planning to build or support a multilingual app, uh, having it both in Chinese and Russian, in addition to English, means that you pretty much cover about 70% of the user demographics. So, as for the age demographics, uh, our data is fairly consistent over the last uh, few years of what you, one might expect in the crypto scene, with uh, close to uh, half of the users in the age bracket of 25 to 30 years. However, while the age bracket remained relatively similar in the last few years, we definitely saw an increase of, uh, in the proportion of female users. So back in 2017, only 8% uh, of the users were female. Uh, fast forward to 2019, we see this number double up, close to 16% of the user demographics. So, affinity and in-market user demographics. Uh, essentially segmentation by user interest and marketing categories. So looking at the affinity in market analytics, we, just, we, we see this coming from user categories of value shoppers and technologies, and those interested in financial and investment services. So compared with the previous years, uh, we did notice that there was a slight shift in the affinity category, and there's now more value shoppers than technologies compared to previous years. So for general user interface analysis, uh, we look at two data points, which is the user browser and screen resolutions. And from here, we see that the majority of users use uh, the Chrome browser, uh, followed by Android Web View and Safari. As for screen, res screen uh, resolutions, the 1920 and 1080 is popular when using a desktop interface. And on mobile devices, the 360 and 6640 is popular. So the biggest shift we see here again is the increase in Android Web View. We have only 6% in 2017, but double off to 40% in 2019. Okay, so for the device category, we see more and more users interacting through mobile phones. Uh, while the, the majority still uses a desktop interface, we expect the number of users using mobile devices to make up more than half of the users over the next 12 months. So as for the uh, user operating system, uh, so the majority of users use Windows, followed by Android, iOS, and Macintosh. Uh, notable change here is that while the proportion of iOS and Mac users remain relatively similar the last few years, uh, it does kind of appear that more and more Windows users are interacting using Android phones today. All right, so further diving to the mobile device breakdown. As a single device type, the Apple iPhone still commands the largest market share, followed by Samsung and Huawei. As, uh, what is kind of interesting here though is that Huawei or Huawei Xiaomi and Oppo weren't really in the top five place a couple of uh, two years ago, but they are today. And as for the mobile operating systems, uh, it pretty much follows the device breakdown with Android capturing the largest market share, share followed by iOS. Okay, so by looking at all the previous analytics data, I derived 2019 Ethereum user persona is most likely male from ages of 25 to 34. Uh, located in China, US, Germany, Ukraine, South Korea, a tech-oriented value shopper of interest in financial services, uh, use a Windows-based PC and Chrome as a private browser, and all likelihood users an Apple iPhone, Samsung, or Huawei as mobile devices. All right, so summing up. So how has the user persona evolved for the last two years from to today? So firstly, we definitely see an increase in mobile penetration. I think this doesn't really seem like a surprise because uh, in 2017, it was largely desktop models and interfaces. Uh, but fast forward to 2019, we have an extremely rich ecosystem of mobile wallets. As for, as for shifting uh, geolocation demographics, as we predicted back in 2017, China was a growing market. Today, the number of users coming from China uh, is proportionally larger than any single country. Uh, we're also happy to see increased gender diversity participation. Uh, we doubled the proportion of female users in 2019 versus 2016. As for the user interest groups, uh, uh, they remain relatively static, uh, but we did not increase to the value shoppers of technologies. So all right, so all in all, while there's still a long way more to go for mass adoption, it just kind of appear we're making baby steps towards more mainstream use. All right, 
uh, that wraps up our presentation. Thank you for your time.